This is the Club Car Model DS, and today we're going to do the spring maintenance, which includes oil and oil filter, air filter, a couple of fuel filters, and a spark plug. Stay tuned. Although it was discontinued nearly 10 years ago, the Club Car DS remains one of the most desirable carts among cart owners. That's for a number of reasons. It was available in gas or electric models. This one is obviously the gas model, the one we're focusing on today. But there are other reasons that people still like the Club Car DS more than any other cart, even more so than new carts. One thing that still attracts people to the Club Car DS today is the unmistakable body style. It's kind of retro and kind of modern all at the same time. It's really timeless. Now I happen to be a big fan of the Model DS styling. I think it's the best looking body style of any cart ever produced. And if you're a fan of the body style like I am, we have one man to thank for that. His name is Dom Saparito. If you notice Dom's initials, DS. That's right. That's why the Club Car DS is called the Model DS named after Dom Saparito. So thank you, Dom, for your great work in the 1980s, for continuing the design all the way through the 2000s. I don't recall if these models were discontinued in 2011 or 2013. Put down in the comments what year your Model DS is, and we can figure out together when the last model year was for this. Now this is a model year 2005 club car DS. If you're not sure what year your club car is, here's a great little tip. If you get down under the dash here, there's a barcode and your serial number. See the first four digits, AG05? Well, A means it's a DS model. G means it's a gas model. And 05 is the model year. So this is a DS gas model 2005. If it was electric, it would be AA05. So that's always a good thing uh, as long as these serial numbers have not been painted over or removed. Another thing that people really like about the club car models is that they have a fully aluminum chassis. That not only makes them lightweight and durable, but they just simply last forever because they don't rust away. This is a 2005 model, so it has the Kawasaki FE 290 four-stroke gas engine. Uh, it runs quiet and steady at a low RPM, pretty much bulletproof. This engine predates any fuel injection, so it's carbureted but works great. You can see the easy access oil filter located just below. There are two belts on the unit. One runs the starter generator. The other one is the thicker drive clutch, which is attached to a constant velocity torque converter clutch. Another reason these carts are so desirable, if you think about it, a golf course could potentially have hundreds of these units. So they're designed for durability, reliability, and easy maintenance. And there are tons of aftermarket parts available so that you can customize your cart any way you like. Now this one, I've installed headlights. I installed a six inch lift kit and bigger tires. That's about it for me. Oh, and the box on the back. But you can do so much with these carts. It's unbelievable. So let's take a little ride to warm up the engine. And then we'll get to work. Hachiko, wanna go for a ride? Come on. Good girl, stay there. Ah, oh, you're nice and wet and muddy feet. Nice. These carts are set to cruise at a full speed of about 15 miles per hour. And there is not much you can do to increase that. Now, the bigger tires up a little bit, you can play with the governor just a little bit, but if you go over too much, there's a RPM limiter and the engine cuts out. So they're designed uh, to, again, be durable and long lasting. And the way you do that is to limit your RPMs of your motor. Good girl, Hotch, we're here. You can get down now. We're done. We're done. Okay. Come on. We're done. So the first thing we're going to do to access the engine is flip the seat forward. But these seats lift off. They have simple little hinges that just lock into place. So we'll just take this off completely and set it aside. That gives me full access to the engine. I can see the oil fill plug down there and the filters right there. Very little work is going to be needed from underneath just to drain that oil plug. So we'll jump on that in a moment. There's a couple other things I want to show you. One is the neutral bypass switch. It's the, the maintenance setting. Um, 
there's a way to run these engines in neutral. And if you didn't know that, I'll show that to you now. I'm going to use my little action cam. That way I can show you the other angle here. Now I'll put the cart in neutral. The key is on. Of course, if you press the gas, you know, nothing happens. But here's the maintenance position. You see this yellow piece of plastic? You pull it out and you rotate it about 180 degrees and it locks in place. Hey, my foot was on the pedal. So now we're in neutral. I can run the engine. Of course, there's some safety issues involved with that. You've got spinning parts down there, the belts, but it's a great way to see what's going on. Make sure everything's going well. Still rolling. Let me show you that clutch system, how that looks. So that's it. Now obviously we want to turn the key off to make sure we don't mistakenly hit that pedal and I think we're good. You know I always like to show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes stuff. So since I have this action cam, let me come forward, show you my tripod setup today. I've got a Home Depot bucket, a Lowe's bucket, a second Lowe's bucket, a little Gorilla Pod, and the Canon M50 camera. I'm also using the little Rode Wireless Go lavalier mic, and I've got that tucked inside my shirt here. So it's picking up the sound from right here, and the wire comes through in my pocket. Anyway, I was really proud of my tripod today and just wanted to share that with you. So now that the engine's warmed up a little bit, we're ready to change the oil. The oil drain plug is right up front. Let me see if I can get down here and show you. conveniently located just below the drain plug is a hole. So we'll set our bucket below that hole, take out the plug, and drain the oil. You might remember this oil drain bucket and this roll of paper towels from one of my earlier videos where I do the maintenance on my tractor. If you'd like to watch that, you can find that right here in the corner. I'm sure you'll find it equally entertaining. We'll set this bucket underneath. That plug looks like it's probably a 9 16 or, hmm, might be metric. Let's try 15 millimeter first. Too loose. Let's try 14 millimeter. Just right. Looks like a socket and a ratchet will not fit with the hole there. So plan B is going to be a 14 millimeter box end wrench. Found one. It's on. Cracked it loose. Not bad. Loosening it right up. Getting ready to drain without dropping the plug. I can feel there's a small gasket on the plug. We don't want to lose that either. There it goes. There's the oil drain plug. It has what appears to be an aluminum washer on it to make for a good seal. 14 millimeter head. Nice big threads. We'll set that aside. Now this oil filter is obviously going to leak a little bit of oil, so I'm just going to stuff an old cotton towel there to catch some of the oil. And like we always do, I'm going to lubricate the gasket for the new oil filter with a little bit of clean oil. Dip a little oil on my finger tip and wipe it around just to lubricate that filter so that next time it's not stuck to the engine block. All right, see if I was right about this filter being hand tight. 
I can get two hands around this guy. Not moving. Can you believe it? All right. I have that nice nylon strap oil filter type wrench that never lets me down. So let me go grab that. All right, as long as I can get it around the filter, we should be good. It hasn't let me down yet. There it goes. I've had this nylon strap wrench for years and years, and it is got to be the best oil filter wrench that I've ever had. Okay, new filters here in place. Unscrew the old one. Not too much leaking out there. tighten this because again there's plenty of room in here so we'll go with that it was a good move to put that rag down there we'll put the plug back in and then we'll add our oil Well, I'll tell you again, these carts are designed for maintenance. The oil fill is and dipstick is right on top, easy to get to, has a nice big opening, which I am certain I can fill without spilling. Now these motors take 1.2 quarts of oil, 38 fluid ounces. I don't know what the metric equivalent is, but we're in America, so we're gonna use non-metric stuff. All right, put the stick in, key on, maintenance mode. Let the oil drain down a little bit. Checky check, check. Looks good. All right, the air filter is located under the left side of the seat as you're seated on the cart. A couple little straps that come off there. thinking we may have to take this snorkel off. If you watched any of my other videos, you may have seen these crummy pliers. I seem to always go for these pliers because they, well, they're always right on top. That comes off easily. Still can't quite get the lid off. I don't know what holds it in place, but maybe I can get the filter out. Wow. That is amazingly clean, considering I have never changed it. I've had this cart for about, I'm embarrassed to tell you, I've had it for at least three years. Never changed this air filter. In fact, it's dated 615. The golf course that I bought this cart from obviously changed it before I bought it. Um, that's a good sign that they hold up pretty well. The new filter here looks exactly the same. And slide it in. Snap it in place. That's great. Put the air filter snorkel back in place. All right. Good for several more years now. 
I'm not a fan of the smell of gasoline, so let's do the spark plug first and the two fuel filters last. All right, I've got my 13 16 spark plug socket. Oh, that was already kind of loose. Careful. A little pine needle stuck to it. There we go. But I gotta say, that plug is in good shape too. There's another pine needle. Piece of grass. Okay. It's good to check the gap on your spark plug before you put it in. I don't recall the number off the top of my head, so I will try to put that on the screen. There's a gap between you and me. Time for the fuel filters. Gloves back on because I don't like the smell of gasoline. Some people love the smell of gasoline. I don't get it because I don't like it, so I don't get it. So I turned off the fuel and I ran the engine until it stalled out, which basically sucked most of the fuel out of these filters, but I can still see some in there, so I don't know if that was really wise or necessary. Last summer I changed all these hoses because they were getting dry rotted. It's important to note the orientation of the filter because there is a, a fuel direction. It's actually an arrow on the filter pointing in the direction that the fuel should be going. Just take these clips and slide them back. And open up the other filter. This one says made in Israel 2010. Is that possible that this was made 10 years ago? I guess it is. All right, gonna turn the fuel back on. And we'll see if it'll start up. Turn the key on first. Hey, if you like this video and you like the content here on the channel, I'd really appreciate it. If you would hit that subscribe button, click the little bell so you're notified when I put out new videos, hit the like button, share the video, and make some comments because uh, one of the best things is interacting with the viewers. So thanks very much and have a great day.